Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, and thank you to all the lovely reporters we have on the call. As a reminder, please use the raised hand icon if you have a question and I will allow you to unmute. Um, so without further ado, let's start with Brian Sandalow from the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, hi, Ezra. Thanks for making some time uh, this afternoon. Uh, we appreciate it. I hope all is well with you. Yes, definitely. Thanks for having yeah. me here, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And uh, just uh, wondering if there's uh, what, what the current health situation with, with the team is. And uh, also just wondering how uh, uh, Gaston Jimenez is coming along and uh, the, the two of the new guys, uh, Hale Selassie and uh, Suke. Yeah, well, um, first of all, it's been a, a very good uh, preseason so far for us um, as far as health standpoint. Um, we do have a, a couple of knocks, but uh, nothing uh, we hope is major. Um, Selassie uh, did uh, have a, a, um, a quad uh, strain, but nothing. Um, he, he should be back training um, tomorrow. Um, Suka is in camp now. He just came a couple of days ago from uh, from France, so um, he'll be a... Uh, uh, he, he's back in training and everything. Um, Gaston is coming along. Um, we're hoping to have everybody in uh, training next week. Um, so hopefully that's 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 the situation with that. But so far, uh, it's been a really good good camp uh, as far as from the physical uh, aspect of things. Is uh, just a follow up on Gaston. Is he a doubt for um, being available March fourth? We'd have to see. Um, uh, I'll be able to tell you better by the mid next week to late next week. Um, right now it's, it's a wait and see, but uh, we're hoping that uh, it doesn't take that long um, to, to get him back uh, on the pitch. Uh, like I said, we're hoping that even next week he'll start be back in training with the players. And it's still the, uh, the, the issue that ended his season last year, or is it something different? It's, it's something different, uh, but I think it's, it's from compensation. Um, and it, it's, you know, right now it's, uh, it's hard to say uh, exactly what um, the issue is, but he's having some issues and it could be from compensating because of uh, that injury. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Next, we will go to Alex Calabrese from Men in Red. Thank you, E. Hey, Ezra, hope you're doing well. Um, just my Thanks. question for you is looking at the current squad, looking at the transfer market, how happy are you with the roster as it stands right now going into the beginning of the season? And do you think that there are still areas that you need to bring players in to be ready to compete in Major League Soccer? Yeah, well, we're we're happy, but, um, you know, we're not satisfied. Um, we have some, some areas that we think we still need to add some players, and that's an ongoing. Uh, we're actively trying to do that. But we have gone out and, and brought in some players, some key uh, positions, some key attributes that we thought uh, we needed. Uh, so Selassie, someone we, we felt that we needed with some pace on the wings uh, to stretch defense. We have guys who, who are fast, but, you know, they like to play in the half channel and play in front of defense. But it, so it's nice to go out and get someone that can stretch defense because with, with um, Shakiri's skill set, that's something that we felt like we needed. Um, we obviously need a right back uh, due to uh, Boki. Uh, Sikola's leaving. Uh, so we went out and got that. And, you know, we, we, we got uh, Johnny Dean, who's a good, you know, uh, he's going to compete for for the starting position. Uh, but we, we felt was a good uh, young uh, mid-20s player that we, we would add uh, nicely to the team. Uh, but we know that we, we need to get some goals. Uh, one of the things that we were lacking last year was some goals. And um, with losing Duran, you know, the depth uh, at that position is not quite where we want it to be. Uh, where we needed to be, frankly, but it's we're actively trying to uh, solve that situation. Thank you. Next, we will go to Larry Hawley from WGN. Hi, Ezra. I hope you're doing well today, and uh, thanks for the time. I wanted to ask you about Chris Brady, maybe what you've seen out of him maybe at the end of last season when he had his chance to uh, make his debut with the club, and then what you've seen out of camp so far as, as he fights for playing time and, and, and possibly starting spot. Yeah, so we were really careful uh, towards the end of the season once, you know, it was obvious that uh, Gaga was going to leave, that we didn't throw Chris into the fire, so to speak. Uh, so we gave him that last game and we thought he did really, really well. So that was very promising for us. Um, and he's been really, very, very good in training uh, in this preseason. He, he's been a very good delight. Um, but 
you know, we also uh, got Jeff Gollin and we have Spencer Ritchie who was here from last year. So it, it's a competition, uh, but he has been performing really, really well uh, so far this preseason. Thank you. And before we go to the next person, I just like to um, say as a reminder, you can use the raised hand icon if you have a question. And next we will go to Hernan Espinosa from La Fiera Deportiva. Good afternoon, coach. I hope you're doing well. My Thank question you. is, uh, you do an uh, evaluation of all the four games that you have already in hand. What do you think about the, the squad, the team that you have? You say you were missing some goals. You need more more attacking, uh, but you have goals. And uh, I want to see if you, you can give us an evaluation of the four games that you play already. Thank you. Yeah, well, what we're trying to build here as far as building a championship team, uh, we know that we have to be solid. We have to be organized defensively. And I think last year we showed a lot of that. But we knew going into the um, preseason that even with 12 shutouts last year, we failed to make the, make it to the playoffs. And that's that's a goal of ours, to get into the playoffs. So getting better in the attack is something that we, we knew we had to do. So we a lot of the focus uh, in this preseason has been on our um, final third um, effectiveness, yeah, efficiency. Uh, we're getting there, but we're not really, we were getting there, but we, we weren't putting our chances away at the rate that we, we needed to, uh, with, 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 you know, being so good and so organized defensively. So that's something that we've been focusing on, on this uh, preseason. And it's showed in some games. Um, but, you know, what we don't want to do, um, if you take the last game, for instance, is we scored three goals, but then we gave up three. And yes, you could say there were some players on there that were, you know, getting some minutes, uh, some some inexperienced players on the pitch. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter for us who's on the pitch. You know, as a Chicago Fire team, we want to be very, very solid defensively. We want to make sure that uh, we don't give up uh, three goals in a game. And so that was very disappointing from that standpoint. Um, so we're not uh, going to forget, you know, what we need to do defensively as we try to get better offensively. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's good to see that the goals are coming, but... I was, you know, we were very, as a, as a coaching staff, we were very disappointed that we we gave up uh, the, the three goals in the last game. So that's something that uh, we we need to make sure that we, we rectify going into tomorrow's game against um, Salt Lake. Thank you. Um, Liz Jimenez, did I see that you had your hand up? Yes, I'm here. Hi, coach. Can Hi, you hear me? You? Yes. Well, uh, my question is regarding this year, you have uh, a new tournament, this League's Cup, and it's like another goal and another uh, thing to go with the Chicago Fire. It's going to be against Puebla and Minnesota. Can you say something about this new tournament and how you feel, how you expect this is going to be? Well, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, it's it's good to be involved in a, in a tournament like this because it's always good to see how you match up against, you know, um, other teams in a, in, in a tournament uh, style setting uh, and one team being from from Mexico. That's also good to see where you, you stand against uh, those teams. But our focus is the MLS and making sure that we get to the playoffs this year. Uh, so that's going to be our focus. Uh, we're not going to take the League Cup lightly. Because it's something, as I said, we want to see, you know, how we match up uh, against these team, these regional teams. But our focus going into this year is definitely uh, coming out strong, um, like we did last year. But you know, this year, you know, the difference getting some goals this year uh, to to win some of these games that we were tying at the beginning of the year last year. Um, so, yes, the League Cup is something that you know we we have to play. We are, we're a part of it. We we want to be a part of it. Uh, we think it'll be good for for the for the team for the club uh, to be involved in that tournament. But uh, make no mistake about it that our focus uh, is MLS play. And we that's going to be the focus uh, for the entire year and making sure that come October uh, or November, whenever playoff starts, that, that we are one of the teams that's still playing. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will have the last question from Brian Sandalo. Sure. Uh, yeah, Ezra, there's been, uh, it doesn't seem like, there's been some reporting about what the playoff format could be, um, uh, how many teams will make it. What have you been told about the playoff format for this season? And how much does that sort of affect, does that, how much does that uncertainty sort of affect um, your planning for the season and what your goals are in terms of points and wins? 
Yeah, so we really haven't been given a, a final detail about how that's going to go. Um, the MLS guys were here last week um, doing the uh, MLS Association, some meetings and some pro meetings and stuff. And, and I spoke with a couple of those guys and it was it's still in the process. They're still trying to decide the exact format of the of the playoffs. So I'm not even sure exactly how, how that's going to uh, play out. But uh, any way that it plays out, we just want to make sure that we, you know, we're in a position uh, to be in the playoffs and we're doing whatever it takes uh, to be in that playoffs. Um, I heard rumors, everything from it being in a playing game with 10 teams and team seven through 10 having a play in. Uh, so I, I'm not really sure uh, the exact format. And, and you know, according to uh, the MLS as of last week, it wasn't finalized yet, but it's something that either way, uh, we, we have to be ready uh, to do whatever it takes, get enough points to make sure that we are playing still late October, early November. What would be your preference uh, for a playoff format? What do you think would be uh, the best uh, move for the league? Well, I think how it was last year was was fine. Um, I think the difference this year might be the number of games that's in the first round. I heard that there was some Christian that might maybe going to a home and away or something like that. But um, I think uh, just making sure that uh, each team has an equal opportunity uh, to move on once they've made the playoffs would be the uh, ideal for me. Um, I think sometimes if it's just a one game, maybe that home team has the advantage and it's it's really difficult. If let's say you come in at the seventh seed and you've finished the season on a five game winning streak and you're in a good uh, rhythm, you know, to have to go and play at the number two seed or whatever have you uh, away from home, it could stop some of that momentum and, you know, cause you going on further. So to have that second game would be, ideal but you know with the league cup and open cup and all these other games that also uh could you know be you know detrimental to you know the physical you know uh aspect of, of players and, and and cause injuries and stuff like that so you know I, i'm just a coach um i need to just get my team ready uh for whatever uh form um situation uh, the playoff whichever whatever, whichever format uh the league decides to go to and then let the you know the guys at the league office uh decide uh, how that's going to play out. But uh, for me, you know, given each team that makes the playoff an equal opportunity to to move on to the next round would be ideal. Thank you so much, Coach. We really appreciate your time. And Thanks, everyone else, everyone else um, please just sit tight with us for a second, and we will be back with Chris Brady. Thank you, Coach. Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I love your shirt. It's Thank you. lovely and red. Um, <laughs> yep. We can just see your head floating. It's all good. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, next, or I'm sorry, we will go ahead and get started. Thanks for taking the time with us. Um, we have quite a few reporters on the line. Just as a reminder, if you have a question for Chicago homegrown goalkeeper Chris Brady, please use the raised hand icon. And we will start with Brian Sandalow from the Chicago Sun-Times. Sure. Uh, hi, Chris. Thanks for making some time for us this afternoon. Uh, we, we all really appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just still wondering how do you think uh, camp uh, right now is going for you? And uh, do you think you've made a strong argument to be uh, between the sticks on March 4th? Yeah, I mean, pre so for the team, preseason has been great so far. Um, I think you've seen that in... Uh, and the scores and results we've gotten in the games we played so far. And then obviously based on this one final test tomorrow, um, you'll see how 
how we uh, yeah, we kind of match up to a uh, MLS opponent. Um, but no, I'd say as a team, I'd say we're gelling pretty well and uh, all good all good things from our end. And then for myself, I would say, yeah, I mean, uh, as much as I want to push and uh, make my case to become the starter in between the sticks, um, I'm really focused on just getting the team into a better spot um, and starting off the uh, the MLS season better than uh, better than we did last year. Um, so I'm not too caught up in the who's starting, who's not right now. I'm just more uh, more focused on um, you know the games that I do play, trying to perform. Thank you. Next, we will go to Alex Calabresi from meninred97.com. What's up, Alex? Thank you. Hey, Chris. Hope you're doing well. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you've played in some big games already in your career, the game against New England, some big qualifiers down in Honduras. But how prepared do you think you are at the beginning of the MLS regular season to be the number one when there are much higher stakes and the stadiums are going to be full and it's not going to be the comfortable surroundings of Bridgeview? Yeah. Um, so environment, fans, noise, that doesn't really impact me. Um, preparations wise, I'm just making sure tactically and technically I'm uh, sound and, uh, you know, all there leading up to the game. So that week prior, two weeks prior, uh, making sure that performances and training are clean and I'm getting all the information I need for the, the game coming up. Um, and like I said, if if I do end up becoming the starter, um, yeah, I, uh, I feel pretty prepared um, to uh, take charge and uh, lead our team to a uh, victory and uh, shut up. Thank you. Larry Hawley from WGN. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good to see you again. Chris, knowing that you can have an elevated level here on the on the main MLS club, how has that changed the way you prepare this year in training camp? Is it any different for you or is, or is it the same as it's been maybe in the past? Um. I'd say I'd say it's been the same. Um, yeah, again, the the, the levels um, don't really change the way I train, prepare, look at things. Like I'm I'm here just kind of kind of doing me and trying to play the best I can. So yeah, I wouldn't say it changes what I do a whole lot. What has it meant for you to see? Uh, obviously, in the same thing, but what has it meant for you to see Selena's success? And I guess how much does that inspire you now that you are beginning now your MLS career, making the next step here uh, in your career for soccer? I mean, first off, I'm super happy for him. You know, I mean, you've seen it. We've we've come up together and trained for so long, um, and uh, to see him finally make it to that that level of play is uh, it's it's great. It's great knowing that uh, that's possible. And then for me. Um, I'd say inspiration wise, it's a, it's a big one um, because he, you know, I don't want to say paved the way because uh, everybody's path is different, but him being able to go from an MLS uh, environment, playing these MLS games to making it that far um, so far is it, it shows me that that's very indeed possible. And I know now the inner workings of what it takes to, uh, you know, make it there because I was I was right next to him. What did you learn the most from him? Is it is it how you prepare? Is it tactically? What are the things you take away? Kind of watching uh, Gabriel make his way up. Yeah, um, for me, the biggest two things are probably focus and work ethic. Um, in trainings, this guy was a beast, man. He uh, did, never showed up to training uh, at any point that I remember, um, and he wasn't given it 110. Um, and then getting close to game time this guy was dialed in focused um he made sure he had all the all the tactics down he was making sure that the game plan was memorized he these are all things that i'm now trying to um you know trying to incorporate into my own game so yeah now this guy he he had it down thank you chris i appreciate it yeah for sure thank you larry and next we'll take a question from hernan espinosa from la fiera deportiva Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. You say that I mentioned it's, uh, it's the same training uh, like last year. Uh, and my question is, uh, probably they made it out to you again, but what, what, how you feel uh, to train with Zach Thornton? We know that's one of the legends of the Chicago Fire. Is it different? He, he give you more advice? Or how's your training with him and with the other goalkeepers uh, every day? Thank you. Yeah, um, so... Having a coach like Aiden Brown um, is great, and 
uh, you know, he's very respectable in his profession and Zach's a little bit of a different coach. Um, so switching gears now to, um, Zach as a coach, he's, uh, outstanding so far. I mean, every, every day that we worked with him, he pushes us to give, uh, give the best we can. Um, and he's very, um, he's very big on respect and doing things properly. Um, so I'd say in training, if, uh, you know, for whatever reason, something goes south. He wants to make sure that we recoup, we do it right. Um, so he he weeds out all the uh, all the all the mishaps and uh, you know little slip ups in training. Um, but he's he's very good about keeping us um, keeping us sharp. Um, and he's also uh, you know just a great guy. I mean, he's really easy to talk to, um, super nice on and off the field. And uh, yeah, I mean, he he makes you feel very comfortable here. So. Um, yeah, I've loved every second so far. I'm looking forward to a full season with him. Thank you. Lise, Lise, did I see that you had your hand up? Yes, here I am. Can I? Yes, go ahead. Hi, Chris. This is Liz Jimenez. Nice to talk with you. Mm -hmm. I would like to know about uh, how you feel with this responsibility this um commitment uh with the high standards that Slonina led you have like a, a, a huge goal but uh as you say it's like motivating and, and and what can you say to these new generations that they want to be in your spot and that they have that dream to be someday in the mls yeah um it's doable you know i i'd say the biggest thing is just work hard and uh trust that with hard work and uh you know a few things going your way it's definitely possible to be uh where i am and where gaga was um and yeah i mean like i said before he uh he he set the he set the tone basically um uh, for what a what a young goalkeeper in chicago um needs to do to make it make it big um so and like i said everybody's path is different so uh you're not going to be seeing the same exact things as you saw from gaga from me um but uh yeah no i'd say um definitely took a few things from him and from me and him and other goalkeepers in the chicago land area i'd say it's definitely possible um yeah anything is thank you mm -hmm. yeah thank you chris next we'll go last question to brian sandalo sure Oh uh, yeah, Chris. Uh, and this is, I'm going to phrase this, that it's perfectly high, that it's completely hypothetical. Let's say you aren't the starter. Um, do you think it would be better for you to stay with the fire senior team and continue training with them? Or do you think it would be better for you to be loaned to a USL championship side or maybe even go back to fire two? What do you think would be best for your development if you're not the starter? Um, yeah, that's a decision that, uh, I got to leave up to the coaches. Um, I mean, preference wise, uh, I love Chicago and as much as I can, I want to stay here. Um, but yeah, in the off chance that I am not the starter, um, I'd prefer to stay here and, uh, you know, excuse my language, but work my ass off to get that starting spot. Um, so I, uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, that's not really a decision I can, uh, I can make. Um, so, but as much as I can, I'd like to, like to be here, um, integrating with the squad and all that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. We really appreciate your time. Um, mm -hmm. Of course. You, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, this concludes our press conference, and we will see you all next week. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate thank it. You.